Did you guys know that Tiger, Tiger Saw Man? I saw a tiger. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, I was real confused that you're throwing out there. <laughs> no. That was weird. I saw a tiger. There you go. <laughs> so, so now I understand. Yeah. That's it. What's funny is he said he was listening to his own music to make himself feel better the one day. Yeah, striving the truck. Yeah. That was funny. See if this can happen. I saw a meme life. that was like, um, it was like, hey, this show changed our entire worldview of what crazy was. So when we saw this guy riding around with a skeleton in his, in his car, like shotgun in his car, we didn't even think anything of it. Welcome to the Wedding Crashers Podcast. Tell all the hunters, lay down their guns. I think we I think got it. Baskin's probably messing up this life. What? <laughs> 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 think, all right, we just got demonetized, so that was fast. <laughs> no, keep playing. It's a good song. Tell all the hunters to lay down. All right, I'll stop. That's the, that's the welcome to the show. <laughs> welcome to the show, everyone. <laughs> that's amazing. That's I saw Tiger. <laughs> all right. Tiger saw, man. I'm pretty sure we're live. I'm not we like are. 100% there. So we what's are. up, everybody? Welcome to our, uh, I guess, first crash course. Uh, we have on the almighty James Webb talking about off-camera flash. Woo. You're too kind. Too kind. That wasn't that, that kind. <laughs> it's an almighty, not like a great person all around. <laughs> awesome, dude. All right, cool. So uh, so we'll, what are we going to talk about, James? What are we going to learn today? What do you guys want to know? Oh, off camera flash. I mean, fuck, <laughs> that was in the fucking title. <laughs> is that what it is? Oh, is that what OCF stands for? Right, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, let's see. All right. So, what we'll do is we'll first start off with uh, some examples that I have up here. And you know what's funny? So, I saw this, right? And I also saw that um, Magmod was doing something of uh, deconstructing, I, I, Matt Gruber was on there with some other people. And I was like, holy shit, this is kind of like what we're doing tonight. <laughs> awesome. But Dude, we should have got Matt Gruber. Oh, I, we should have, man. You guys, <laughs> you guys really fucked up by bringing me on. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. This is a failure. Total failure. Oh, no, 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 that's off camera flash. This is OCF on camera flash. That's all we're going to talk about. <laughs> oh, okay. The, the one that camera, yeah. pops out of the top. With the tubbleware over it, that's all we're doing. Oh, real quick, you may notice that we have a special guest host today. We have yeah. Leanna of Leanna Hi. Teresa Photography. We thought we could use some help on some of these episodes. You don't hear us more on stock. Yeah. Right, yeah, we're the worst. We're the worst. All right. Hey, cool. so someone was saying more tiger. I like them. More tiger. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to hear me. They want to, They want Joe Exotic. Right. <laughs> Wouldn't that's you? That's what they want. I absolutely would. Here we go. All right. That's awesome. So, there we go. <laughs> that was me. That was, right. that was you. All right. So, get into it. one of the um, one of the things that I get asked a lot is like when I'm shooting, like how do you shoot against um, uh, backlit shots? Like how do you balance that out? Let me grab my uh, camera here. Camera? Yeah, I have my I have my it? Gary Fang macro lens here, Dope. right? So I don't know if a lot of people know about this feature. Um, this is a Canon Mark IV, right? It's not a Sony. Just throwing that out there right now. So um, if I'm shooting against something backlit and I want and I'm using off camera flash, for I'll focus on the sky because I want to make sure that the sky is um, exposed correctly, right? And on the back of this, there's this button right here, right? Right there with that little sun thing. You guys see that? Hey, right. I do, but I'm also still hearing Joe Exotic. Is someone playing that through their computer? Who's got it live? Someone has it live playing. Ted, is that you? It's definitely I don't. not me. <laughs> it's not me. Oh, all right, it's fine. Let me make sure it's not me. It just went off. It's our first time being live. Ted's muted, actually. 
ship me to everyone. All right, I anyway. Hear I hear it still. Do you really? Yeah. Let me make sure it's not mine. I can hear Hold it on. in the headphones. God damn it, James. It is. <laughs> James. All right. That, that was nice. We had this guy on. That was enough Hold of that. On, man. We couldn't get Gruber for this show. Man. Stop. Right, that's enough of that joke. I'm Did just go away? Just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah, we're good. Hey, what away? You're good. Okay. I guess it Didn't wasn't go me. Away. <laughs> Didn't go away. No, then it wasn't me. All right. Is it we'll me? I don't it. hear it. I don't hear it. Lynn, do you have you the don't... window open? I have nothing open except for this. Hold it's on, let fine. me do this. Fine, fine. Let me, how about now? Still there. No, it's not me. Oh, it's our show. It's live. I can hear our, our, our voices. Well, yeah, I hear like yourselves in the background, but. Yeah, we're not very good at this. <laughs> that's not true First at all. Not, us. not me. <laughs> all right, let's just keep going. It's not that bad. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Unless somebody's commenting about it. I don't know. Who's, no, who's no, monitoring no. the, uh... all right. Anyway, I don't even know what the fuck I was talking about. You were talking, talking about. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me get this back up here. What does the little button on the back of the camera do? So when you, um, I'll focus on the uh, on the sky, right? And I'll hit that button. It's like a sun. And when I when I hold down my my uh, focus button and hit that at the same time, it'll tell me what my setting should be to properly expose for that sky. All right, so I'll see, I'll read what it is, and I'll go to manual, and I'll adjust the, those settings um, on, on my camera. And then from there, I'll uh, adjust my lighting to where everything is properly exposed. And I'll show you an example. Oh, that's uh, here's, interesting. Here's one. God damn, that's good. All right, so you guys can see this? Yeah. Son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> Not it. Jesus Christ, I suck at this. James, you got this. All right, here we Ooh. go. All right, so I actually had two cameras or two um, uh, flashes set on this. So they were in the dark. The sky was was down over here. Let me set up my annotation. All right, so sun is setting down over here. This was the brightest part of my photo if i would have taken this shot as with no camera or with no uh flash this would have been all blown out and it would look like shit this would have been you know dark um so i actually had a um flash on the ground pointing straight up to light oh, nice. this right here right i had a uh, mag box to my uh to the right uh shining down on them all right and it was it was just out of uh out of um, the frame. So you can see it's nice and light, uh, nice soft light on them. And I exposed for this right here, right? So then I knew that when I took the shot, this would still be, um, I wouldn't lose my detail in the sky because I really wanted that dramatic um, clouds in there. And uh, with the flash coming up here, I knew I wouldn't lose the details in these shadows. So um, this required like two settings on on each of my uh um, on each of my uh, flashes and i use a um a key I, all i use is canning gear so i use these that's a young now hold on all right this is a st e3rt right and it allows you to set up your camera each each flash into different groups so um, the, the one in the back, all right, I needed that to be at like full power in order to really illuminate uh, the details right here. But the one to, um, on the mag box, I think I probably had it like 116 or so, all right? So this one uh, was about 1-1 and this one was 116. And I didn't get it right the, the first time. I took a few test shots before, you know, it came out uh, properly exposed the way I wanted to. So that's uh that's one trick that I uh that I like to use for um Hey James, do you know the name of that uh button? Is it you're it's um, I'm assuming it's a metering mode or, or Yeah, meter, meter mode. That that's meter essentially mode. what okay. what I, I do is you meter for the uh um for the brightest spot that you uh 
um, in the scene. And we got a people, couple, couple people asking, um, or Ted or Leanne, I think you guys shoot Nikon. Um, is there, what would be the, where would you find that on a Nikon? Is there a button right for that on there? Honestly, if there is, I've never used it. I just kind of go find my brightest point where I want it in the background to be or what I want to expose properly for. And I kind of just figure that out. I'll, I'll do some test shots and go from yeah, there, but I should look and see if there is a button to right, on, allow myself to do that. On a lot of the um, mirrorless to do that, to do what James is talking about, you would have to, if you're using, I know if you're using Godox gear or anything like that, and you have your trigger up top, you have to turn it off because it'll automatically adjust your your screen or your, your live view for that. You'll have to turn that off, adjust your settings or meter, and then turn your flashback on because um, you can, you'll just see it live and exposed for that. James, do you ever yeah. use Live View to do that? Um, no, I don't think I do. Okay. James, I'm I have sure. a couple you, questions. Yeah. So for the backlight flash, you said you had it pointing straight up. Was there any problem with spill where it was going to hit the back of the couple's heads there and make no. it too bright or anything like that? No. I mean, it's it was probably about maybe 10 feet away. And I, um, I set the zoom to like, so it wasn't wide. I think I might have had it at like 125 or, okay. or close to 200. Cool. Awesome. Yep. And now your so question on the couple, would you, um, just for anyone who's really new to this that's watching now, would you have set your zoom, what would you have put your zoom on your flash on uh, for the couple? I just, whatever. It, okay. it, there's an automatic setting on it. So, um, on the mag box, you know, I think it's, it, I don't automatically have it like 122 or something, something like that. So, good question. But that's a, um, so that's a little bit more, I don't want to say too advanced, but, you know, anytime you have more than one flash, you know, it gets kind of tricky, especially when you have to set your groups to um, uh, figure out, how, uh, you know, what you want each one to be. You know what's uh, so cool about that shot, though, James, is if you didn't know anything about off-camera flash, it looks like you didn't use flash at all. Like, right. it's so naturally yeah. put in there. Absolutely. Yeah, that. and that's what I try to go for, because, you know, I do shoot a lot of natural light. You know, when I'm tra when I'm uh, doing an engagement session, I like to travel as light as possible. Um, but I knew that we were going to be in some situations, because that's in Asbury Park. I knew that we were going to be in some situations where I was going to want to back uh, or light the back up or the background up a little bit. Um, so I knew I, I had to bring two flashes, but usually I'm bringing like one flash. Um, and the reason I, can I say something else to it? Like what Mike said, it looks yeah. like the exposure is the same brightness level on their faces as that bright part yeah. in the sky. So yeah, that's why it kind of looks like it's not lit at all. Like it's really cool. Like it can kind of trick the viewer to think that this just all one lighting source, you know? Yeah. I might've, um, I mean, of course some of that is done in post purposely you know, to, uh, to bring up some of the shadows and stuff like that, but you know, I try to make it as consistent as possible. Right. Yeah, it was gorgeous. Thank you. All right. Um, so here's another one where she's backlit, obviously, with the sunset. And um she just, this was a really hard shot to do because I wanted a shot where she was just having fun, um, you know, playing with her her dress, blowing it around. Um so I needed to make sure that I had, you know, stay kept the um composition right but also made sure that my flash would fire. Um, because it was against back, um, backlit, I had to have my uh, flash power up pretty high. And this, again, was on a, um, a mag box, but I might even have the, um, uh, the diffuser off of it. So it was like shooting straight flash at her. So my flash was over here shooting straight down this way. And it honestly might have even been close to um, full power on this one. And I was just, you know, um holding down the trigger just constantly firing it there were some missed shots you know because it was shooting at high power but in order to get you know not lose this keep the keep the colors here and also get her nicely lit you know that was a um, it was a tough gamble but same thing i um focused on here hit my um and i metered for the sunset right that way i made sure that that was properly exposed Dial, took a couple test shots of her um, to make sure that my uh, flash was dialed in and it just had her um, wave her dress around. And this is only one flash. Hey, so a question, yeah, um, uh, 
for people who are uh, trying to figure out like flash placement and stuff like that, do you have like a normal, a standard like kind of go to, or do you you change it? Um, I know um, the, Mag- the Magbox is pretty pretty popular, but it's a typical soft box, right? Kind of smaller soft box. Yeah, I um I try to get it as close to the couple as possible, um, just out of frame because the closer to um the source or the uh, to the subject, the softer light is going to be. Um, and I always put it to where um, I make sure that the bride's face is is fully illuminated. So. So you were talking about the flash firing before. Um, are there certain batteries you like to use? Or are you a fan of those like battery packs? Like no, uh, I use I so use uh, T energies or Tenergies. Okay. So I use these okay. Johns, and I have a whole bunch of them. And honestly, I can go a whole wedding without ever changing my batteries honest to god Mm. um during um receptions i usually set my flashes to one about 132 116 anywhere from around there all right um usually let me say god it's been so freaking long since i've worked a wedding i don't even remember because it's like muscle memory (laughs) you know what i mean right yeah Yeah, it's definitely like 132 because it's a dark room you really don't need it all that high Right. So I, I'll set my flashes, and I and I have one on each corner. I'll set it to one thirty-two, and um, they'll last me all wedding. Wow. So it's uh, you know, I don't have to uh, ever yeah, replace it's, them. It's interesting. Um, I've had problems with that with some of the Godox, and I saw somebody post about it. And, and I'm sorry if this is like a, a pain point for somebody, but somebody in Speakeasy posted about it as a um, lithium batteries versus the like the double A style batteries. Um, like I'll have with the Godox, if I'm like really firing away, um, I'll have missed shots during like indoor ceremonies, things like that, where it's like, I'm not really pumping that much light in, but it's enough to where like every, you know, every third shot will, will hit, but I'm missing two shots in there. Yeah. Is there anything you recommend for that or just keeping the flash power low or anything like that? You know, yeah, definitely, um, keep your flash power low. Uh, you know, bump your ISOs up because, I mean, especially with mirrorless, I mean, uh, I can imagine that the noise levels, you can really crank up those ISOs and mm-hmm. not worry about any noise. Um, with the Mark IV, I know I can bump up my ISOs pretty high, uh, which allows me to keep my um, flash power low. And the good thing with Canons is I use um, the version 2s of the 600 RT, EX RTs or whatever the hell they're called. And um, if I have two of them and one one um, is not fully charged, but the other one is, the other one will fire. So the old versions, it wouldn't fire until both of them were fully charged. Oh, wow. So, okay. so I mean, with this, it minimizes any um, lost shots. Yeah, exactly. Hey, um, one more question. I just forgot what it was. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Good question. Yeah, I'll come back to it. <laughs> okay. It had to do with this shot, though. Oh, right. um, do you – so for stuff like this, for the backlit outdoor stuff, are you using high-speed sync? Um, let me see. I might have. Let me see what the settings on this one is. I mean, it doesn't have to be this specifically, but is it something that you do typically? Do you, you crank that? I do, speed? yeah. I, I use high-speed sync a lot, especially um, uh, during engagement sessions when – or outside shots like this where they're backlit, and I really need to um, – raise up the, the shutter speed past 200, you know, to, uh, uh, to compensate for it. Right. Uh, let's see, where's my info. And you're doing this just with straight up speed lights. Like that shot right there was, it was speed lights. It wasn't anything. Yeah. Okay. No, let's see. Info. So this was a, oh yeah, definitely high speed sync. It was, um, F stops was 1.4 exposure time was one, uh, 1600. Okay. So, and it was with a 35 millimeter. Love that lens. I have a question Thanks. for that photo, Jed James. How Which high one? was your front light? Was it at eye level or was it about maybe eight feet high, seven feet high? Uh, no, I, I don't ever put my uh, flashes at eye level. I always have them high, usually at like a 45 degree angle. So um, just by looking right here, it was like probably right about here. Okay. Just like right down. But yeah, I always try to get it at a uh, at a forty five degree angle. Forty five and forty five. That's my general rule. 
Awesome. All right, so let me go over some simpler flash setups just so you can see. Um, this I'll talk about this one last. I had five flashes for that one. Jesus, uh, <laughs> that's dope. This one, this one was fairly easy. This was just one. So this was one uh, flash. Danny B was actually here. Oh I, God, uh, we had to talk about shot. Danny B. Already. That's it. I had. Oh, I had Jesus, to talk man. About Come on. <laughs> There's no such thing uh, as Danny B anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, um, so this is a perfect example of Leanne asking me where I put the flash, because I know that if I have it over here to the right, that my bride would have um, shadows right here, right? Um, so I had it over here on my left, um, pointed down. This was uh, on a mag box, point it right down. As you can see, the light's like nice and um, soft around the edges. And um, I knew that actually some light would reflect back to him. As you can see, he's not completely in the dark. I brought some awesome. shadows up using post, but here's another instance where the first thing I did was metered for these lights because I really wanted to make sure that I got all these beautiful bokeh balls in the background of the city. This is at the, um, at the uh, uh, aquarium, right? And I just had them, I just said, you know what? Just enjoy yourselves, you know? And they sat there and they had a, conversation with each other i dialed in my settings and took some shots off and i mean here they are you know got a beautiful moment of them looking at each other laughing and you know just talking so it was cool stuff yeah. um i think this was with a uh, 135 or 85 so i was pretty far back um but i wanted to really make sure that i was able to compress the scene because if i took um it was like a 50 i may lose some of these bokeh balls they might be a little smaller you know what i mean so mm -hmm. Hey, and I, I think you said this, you talked about the light bouncing back. Where did you have the, the flash coming from again? Over on the left-hand side over here. Was it, so I with did. with something like that, would you still do a 45 or would you bring a little more towards center to make sure you eliminate both their faces? I actually think I had this um, a little lower because um, there was trees, so I couldn't, but uh, normally I probably would have it at 45 because I want to make sure, <laughs> I want to make sure if it's any lower, then his shoulder might hit you know, cause some shadows like on her, it was any lower, even if right. depending on how close I had it, it might, his ear might even cause like a weird shadow going this way. So that's right. why, you know, I want to make it a 45 degree angle between them and me, right? And up in the air. I mean, as you can see, here's the shadow right here, or here's a shadow from his, uh, uh, from his shoulder. Mm -hmm. so if you look, that's like the angle that it was, that the flash was on. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty hard. And so nice this is close. a simple shot. Yeah, this is a simple, just one flash shot. And, um, you know, it's it was uh, really easy to do. I like it. Gorgeous. Thank you, sir. I think I'm going to give you validation after every photo. <laughs> I think it's important for people listening, too, that like, if you're not super comfortable with this, grab your partner, grab the video, guys. Like, I, I've been mm -hmm. doing for years and I always, before I bring my couples out, will just grab everyone else and be like, hey, let me mess around for five minutes with you guys before I bring my couple out here and, and have no idea what's going on or what I plan on doing. So don't be afraid to kind of go out there and experiment. And oh yeah, absolutely. Things you're seeing before you bring your couple out. So you're experimenting live as, as it's happening in the exact same situation. Don't be afraid to do that. Go out there and, and give it a try. And if you mess up on your friends, who cares? Then you know not to do that with the couple. Right. Yeah, you get some, I can't tell you how many photos of Alyssa Kaufman I have. <laughs> <laughs> so many, that's awesome. Here's another one flash setup. Sweet Carol Baskins, that's a good shot. Look at that <laughs> shark. Dang. Actually, you know what? I had two on this. I had two um, oh, flashes. You say, you say sweet Carol Baskin? How fucking dare you? <laughs> sweet Carol Baskins. Um, so you see the one, so for this one, I wanted to make sure that I was able to create some shadows. As you can see, I did. So I wanted, and I should have had my um, my brightest light coming this way, but it just happened to where it was on this side because I think she changed positions or whatever. But whatever case, it still came out pretty cool. Um, but I, I on this side, I believe that I had a um, a uh, just a bare flash, or it might even have a spear on it, right? A mag boob, as you guys may know it. And over <laughs> here, over here, I had my um, my uh, light stand with a mag box, and. So I wanted 
I, I had them offset. So I had one flash a little higher than the rest because I wanted to use one as a, as a fill. So as you can see, this one ended up being the fill and this one ended up being uh, the hotter one um, or the, the brighter light, which I mean, you know, worked out pretty well. I mean, we all know, you know, just 2020 vision or 2020 hindsight, but um, the hardest thing with this was not getting any reflections on here because it, it was, you got to be really aware, especially when you're shooting at the aquarium, of all these lights because I mean they just wreak havoc on you. I That's got what some I was reflection. Ask. I got what some reflection, mean? like right here. But this is from stuff from existing lights that that was in the background. But uh, right. my flashes were barely visible. I think like I had to clone out a little bit here, um, and I don't think there was anything here because it was on a uh, on a mag box. Hey, James, how did you avoid the glare and or the reflection? Abby's asking. So um, I had them, you, you have to position them where they're high enough and they're further and they're, they're wide enough to where they don't appear on the, uh, uh, on the glass. And I was actually um, com really, I was compressing this scene. I think I might have had an 85 uh, but if you're using anything wider, then you're going to, chances are you're probably going to get uh, a glare from the uh, flashes on the screen. Uh, How far was, away was she from the wall? Hold on. Yeah, this was with an 85. And she was actually, uh, she was maybe five feet away from the wall. That's still pretty close, right? But yeah, but I mean, this part of the aquarium is not big at all. So with an 85, I was able to, um, I was like pressed up against the wall, the, the wall that's behind me. And um, I was on the ground, you know, cause I, cause I wanted that perspective. And, um, you know, I was able to get the look that I, that I really wanted. Cause I shot there before, I shot there a couple times before. And one of the things that I knew that I wanted to avoid was the uh, the glare from the uh, from the glass. Yeah, you did a great job, man. That looks awesome. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. But it's definitely one of the most challenging places that I had to shoot. Yeah, I'm surprised that you didn't need a like a grid or something to like. I, I would have such a hard time not having glare on those glass windows. Yeah, I, you know, I probably did have a grid on it, um, a grid and a sphere. Okay. Um, but I, I mean, I might even have two grids on it. But this one, same wedding. So these two shots were taken almost at the same time. So uh, oh, Jenna shot, one. Jenna That's shot this awesome. one. Yeah, this was this is really cool. The reason why this works so well, I had my um, mag box like it was pretty much right here, right? Maybe just out of out of a uh, frame. So you can see how nice and soft that light is. Yeah. Right. But back here, I had another flash and that's where this comes into play. So it's, you know, gives you a little bit of separation and this is the trickier shot to, um, to, uh, to do. I had two light stands and for this one, I wanted to make sure that my flash was as low as possible. Right. Because if it was any higher, um, I would probably get some reflections on top over here. So these lights right here, this is from the um, the lights that are above the water. This isn't my flash. So I didn't get any glare at all uh, with this shot. And I got this beautiful shot. She's got these nice highlights on her. Um, and we talked about the, I remember when um, I had the uh, uh, workshop that we were supposed to do at uh, Smithville or whatever. And one of the things I posted in the group was make sure you understand the inverse um, square law. And that means that the light, you, when, when you're working with light that are different um, distance from each other, right? You got to be aware of how how they're going to um, illuminate your uh, your subject because if the one that's further away, um, you may have to have a little bit higher than the one that's closest to the to the um, subject. You so say higher. That, you're talking about higher in power level, not higher. Higher in power. power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Higher in power. I'm sorry. No, nope, that's all right. So, Just clarifying. <laughs> so over here, um, this one was bumped up a little higher and I did have a grid on it, right? And I needed to, um, I, the first thing I did was I put her in place. I went over here and um, one of the things that you 
should do, right? When you when you have your camera, right? It has you know the test shot back here. This little button. It's a uh, it's got a lightning on it right there. It's lit up, right? I'll constantly pop this off, <laughs> right? To make sure that it's hitting where I want it to, all right? And, um, but the first thing you gotta do is make sure that your subject is in place to see where the light is hitting. So once I had that set where I wanted to, I walked in the front and I set up my mag box to, to hit her, um, you know, just right here. I took a couple test shots to make sure that it was, um, uh, you know, the, the settings were where I needed to. And I just had her uh, do her thing. So she was really cool and, you know, how she was uh, posing and the things that she did, very little direction. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one thing that you definitely need to do is make sure you pop that off to make sure it's hitting where, where you want it to. Same thing with, um, with re uh, receptions. I'll um, throw my, uh, my flashes up in the, um, you know, in the corners and I'll take my, my uh, trigger and the trigger has a, a, that green button right there is a, um, or right next to the green button, there's a flash. And I'll stand in the middle of the dance floor and I'll constantly pop this off to make sure that I'm getting hit with, uh, with light, all right? And I'll walk around to see where it's hitting and where it's not hitting. And if I know that, you know, the, the couple may uh, be dancing in a specific spot, you know, um, I'll, ma I'll make sure that that spot is covered. But I always try to tell them, stay in the middle of the dance floor. Because, I mean, aesthetically, it always looks good. And I tell them, make sure you spin around. <laughs> you know, because that's one thing that you hate right. is when they're just standing there. That's actually a good thing to talk about, right, James? Do yeah. you, you prep your couples beforehand? I know we prep ours sometimes about like, hey, if you're coming in for intros, make sure you don't do your cool dance mm -hmm. until you hit the center because we want you in that beautiful light. If you're going to do an epic twist during the first dance, do it in the center. Do you do that at all? Do you work with them like that? Yep. So I ask them, you know, are you guys going to do a dip? Are you going to do anything special? Um, but I always tell the, um, uh, the maitre d', can you please tell the bridal party if they're going to do something cool, don't do it until they hit the dance floor. So that saves me from walking out and saying it 10 times, right? Um, and there's always that one person who just doesn't listen. But I just tell the maitre d', you know, make sure you tell them to do it, uh, anything cool in the middle of the dance floor. Hey, talking about the middle of the dance floor and, and, um, and this subject, are you, do, are you just using two off camera or are you using one on camera as I well? Or? Yeah, I use one on for fill light. Okay. So. And, and how do you, how do you set that? How does that, how does that type of thing work? Do you want, are you, um, do you want to talk about that later? No, we can talk about that. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> so again, <laughs> my, <Whatever>, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you talking about like settings and stuff? Yeah, no, not exactly settings. I mean, uh, is it higher powered than the, the ones outside? Is it lower powered? That kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it is a little bit of a higher power. Again, I'll have um, 132 on off camera. Mm. And on, I'll have it at like uh, 116 or between 132 and 116. Okay. I just walk around my bounce card uh, up like this. Nice. So. No mag boobs? No, I don't, you know, I don't like it because it's heavy. On, the, on the dance floor, it is, it's heavy. It could get knocked off. Right. You know what I mean? So I just use my bounce card. It's, it works. Oh. All right. So same setup, different look. This, uh, so this was from the side. All right. Here is the straight on shot. I'm going to give you, have you uh, give a class on backgrounds, like wallpapers for your <laughs> laptop. Dude, <laughs> no, the no, dopest no. wallpapers. <laughs> this one's so cool. The lines leading to her and stuff. I love yeah. this. Yeah. And I mean, and that is a, um, that's just a uh, unintentional uh, part of the, the photo. Uh, but again, these, all these lights, they're all from up top. Anybody that's shot in the shark tank uh, can tell you how much of a pain in the ass it is because if you're not using a, a grid, you're getting spillage all over here. You don't right. want spillage. You don't want not spillage. Not at a fucking aquarium. Nope. In a shark tank. <laughs> In a shark tank. Definitely not. Yeah. Um, but I was, I think my um, my flash actually was really, or the mag box was actually really, really low. Maybe about, um, you know, six feet because the, the way the tunnel is, you know, it's it's doesn't give you a lot of clearance. So right. it was low, but it still worked. You know, she's still got this nice light. You got this it looks nice like jawline. You're, it looks like you're shooting from a lower angle as well. It is, yeah. So that, that probably yeah. helps too, right? Yeah. Awesome. 
That is a really, that's a really wide lens, right? Yeah, this is... Uh, For you to get that close with a flash and everything, 35. I mean. 35. Man, James, 35? your voice keeps changing, man. Does it? No, I meant like they keep cutting you off. I'm sorry, that was a joke. Failed joke, yeah. failed. Sweet Carol Baskins, that failed. Well, I'm trying to imagine like the flash not being in the photo, but, but high enough. Like you'd have to be close enough for the flash to be that way, I'm thinking. So it's gotta be a really wide lens. Uh, 25. Okay. 25? That's Dang. interesting. Yeah. Well, it was probably my 24 to 70 yeah. that I was using for this. Very cool, James. I like that shot a lot. All right, thank you. So here's a cool one. Well, this does not suck. <laughs> Whoa, that's awesome. It's dope. Amazing. So this was, I think it was last is this, October. Is this frozen? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, just let it go. Um, oh, <laughs> now we're getting sued. <laughs> I think it was, it, this might have been from 2018, and there was this uh, day in October where it was a complete, yeah, it was a complete washout. So this is at the Collingswood Ballroom, and um, I knew I wanted to get this shot, um, or some type of night shot, and so we went out to the uh, the porch, and, you know, I just had this idea. I was like, you know what, I'm going to grid, or I'm going to uh, gel a flash, I'm going to put it in a, in a plastic bag, you know, I have these waterproof um, plastic bags that I bought that I just keep them with me. And I ran out in the rain. I put it at probably about, uh, maybe about 40, 50 feet behind them because I really wanted to make sure that I got all these droplets filled up, right? And um, I flipped the uh, this thing down, right? I don't know if you guys know it, but there's this clear thing. Mm -hmm. And what it does, it... it um, totally disperses the flash so it covers a wider area right so um, I flipped that down I had it sitting on the little plastic uh, stands that this these things come with right I keep like four of them in my bag so I just had it on the ground point it straight at, straight at them I had a um, I don't know if it was a mag box but it was right at right on the side of this pillar it was up and pointed right down at him so you can see like the shadow right here that it, it's casting off of him and I seriously, I took one shot and then that was it. <laughs> I took one shot. I was like, you know what? It's not going to get better than this. So I'm just going to stop. That's dope. <laughs> yeah. And I lit it blue because he's a Rangers fan. So, you know, something for him. Yeah, I mean, it's okay to like bad hockey teams. And I, yeah, think, sure I think you did a great job with this because the, the center elements are enough, but then the, the yeah. windows are like such a great part of this photo. I love the windows and doors there. For me, really it went cool. over the top. Like, that separates it from every other range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, Thank that you. Now, one thing I don't want you guys to be afraid of, and by well, you guys, I mean anybody out there, is Photoshopping for symmetry. On this side was a door, right? And um, so I didn't have this. So I took this, cloned it, flipped it around, and put it over here. That's dope. Nice. Yeah. So nobody's ever the wiser unless I told you. But, I mean, if you – if that's and, and that's one thing I do when I look at a photo. I look for patterns. Like I, I would, I would have identified this right here and this right here and known exactly what the photographer did. But you know, unless uh, I've done that in you know, City Hall before, and that one uh, atrium, it's because yeah. the one side has got a bunch of junk on it, and the other one is mm -hmm. perfect. It's, I just like copy it over. It's yeah, it's nicer. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, let's see. Let me go so to can another talk a little one. bit about rain photos since we're on that one. Um, mm -hmm. and maybe explain to some people who are, are just starting out with this why the flash placement behind them is so important to light up more of it versus what it might look like if it's raining and you bring the flash closer to them or how far you normally may put it behind someone when it's raining. Right. So if you have the light behind the water, Right, so your water's here and your light's here. That light's going to go through and it's going to illuminate it. If you're lighting it this way, so if the water's here and the light's hitting it this way and you're shooting this way, it's it doesn't come up as well as it would um, uh, if it's uh, backlit behind. Um, I remember one time I shot bubbles. If you've ever backlit bubbles, it's it's absolutely amazing. So. Um, 
it, it's kind of like the same effect. It just creates all this beautiful bokeh. And uh, same thing with snow. And I have a snow shot that I want to show you guys too. Uh, but if it's ever raining, make sure that you have the, the flash behind. And um, the, the further behind, the better, because the more spread you get is, I, I think, like 25 feet, maybe 20 to 40 feet oh, wow. is ideal. That far. Uh, that, yeah, that way you can, you know, really get more. Because if you the further back it is, the more droplets you're going to get along the way. You know, if I just had this, like, five feet away, the flash isn't going to cover. It's only covering five feet of ground. You know what I mean? So you're getting more droplets along the way. What about um, power settings on that backlight, James? What do you usually start with for like something crazy like that? When you're in the dark, you really don't need it all that, all that much. I mean, this was probably no more than 132. Interesting. That's my guess. Because you really, when it's dark, you know, it, think about it, it does, it's, it's dark. It's not going to really take all that much to, uh, to light up. If I had it at like, you know, any, anything close to full power, it would just totally overtake everything and white out all the, uh, all the droplets. Wow. Um, let me see. I, you know, I had another uh, rain shot, but it's pretty similar to that. So I'll just bypass that. No, we uh, want to see it. <laughs> I, I don't remember. I don't remember what year it was. Let me see. <laughs> Just kidding, Matt. I lied. Find it. Okay. Uh, it was 2018 because it rained 400 days that year. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Um, Not, here's another out of 365. Yep. Yeah. 400 possible. So this That's is another dope. two light setup. Um, mm. I did the same thing. I metered off of this because I wanted to make sure that this was properly exposed. That's so and dope. I'm pretty sure that my ISOs were pretty high because um, purple is a really hard color to, uh, um, you know, when it's dark to make uh, come out like this. So I was probably pushing like 2,500, 3,000 ISOs, which isn't bad for um, a Canon. Um, but I had my flash behind them right, because I really wanted them to have, you know, it's more so on her. Um, and I had my, my main flash, it was on the mag box, was over here to my right. Again, 45 and 45 and pointing down. And this was a really wide shot. This, I think, was a, probably 16 if I had to. How follow. far was your flash behind them? And was it pointed it was, directly at them? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. Yep, 16. Um, let me take a look. It looks like it's the back line. by that step. Yeah, it was like on the third step. It was probably like right on the third step, like right in the middle, just pointed directly at them. And um, I didn't have anything on it because, you know, you can see by all the spillage right here, um, which didn't bother me all that much. And then my um, mag box again up here and pointed down. But and, if and you're, do, you, do you zoom that flash in and the one in the back, like to them? Is that what you're I, doing? I, honestly, I never bother with zoom unless, I, uh, uh, unless I'm doing something really deliberate right. with it. Um, but with uh, if I was to zoom it in, I would just use a grid. Okay. You know, if you don't have a grid, then yeah, you can use a zoom, and I've done that as well. Like mm -hmm. if um, I needed a uh, like in a ceremony, if I just wanted a shot or something specifically illuminated, I would put it into two hundred if I didn't have a a grid available to me. Okay. I have a couple of questions, um, Jay, uh, James. Yeah, man. Yeah, so, uh, this is Jake say, from State Farm. What is your question? What are you wearing, Jake? I'm just trying to like <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of things that other people might that are watching might be asking, and plus myself. But let's say you wanted to to not have any spill on the ground behind them from the backlight. Like, what? Mm -hmm. I guess what would you do? Would you have it closer or farther away or pointed up? Like, what would you? Yeah, try you to do can. There? You can definitely have it closer, but um, and gridded. If you really, really wanted to um, to get it like to really pop, you would put one flash on each subject, which is a little bit harder to do, um, okay. provided if you had the space. But if you really wanted to avoid this um, spillage, I would have it actually on the ground pointed up to them with a grid. Okay. And you can see right here, their chins are lit up. So I definitely had it pointed up. And that just goes to show you how far this thing spread. 
you know, okay. if it was, uh, it was pointed up like that. But if I had grid that, then you probably wouldn't have had a lot of yeah, this. I think there. that's one of the things I struggle with the most with doing off-camera lights is the spill. I always wanted to light mm -hmm. up a certain thing, but it always ends up spilling onto things around them, like a wall or the ground or, you know, yeah. something like that. Um, let me see. If yeah, I, I bought any. that Magbot Snoot thinking that was going to resolve it. I've never touched it once because I had no idea what I was doing. I just purchased it all. So. You no, know, I actually used that Snoot for the very first time um, last month. And it was at Regalia's. Uh, it was my first wedding in their chapel area. And if anybody has any weddings coming up at the chapel, if it's during the daytime, make sure that you're prepared to have them backlit when they're walking in and when they're at the altar because there when there's doors on the right behind the altar and it sucks <laughs> because mm -hmm. you know especially like my 50 is really bad um when it's uh, it's backlit because it's always it hunts for the for the focus that's one drawback with the 50. so i um i knew that i was having this problem because i was chimping and looking in the back because uh, I suspected it might be an issue. So I ran to the back real quick, threw a, um, a snoot on my um, on my flash, you know, lined it up, and I was able to, you know, get some uh, some decent shots of them up there. Nice. So. Yeah, that's always a, a tough thing to deal with, especially, and, and for the videographers out there too, is something we see with off-camera lighting. Um, it's harder for us in like a ceremony situation like that um, because you're not just popping light, right? It's got to be a continuous light, but that backlight uh, in in ceremony locations is always a nightmare. Yeah, the way yeah. you fix the way you fix it in videography, if you don't mind it so much, is instead of shooting straight on, you kind of angle a little bit. So, for example, at Bergalius, you're not shooting right at the doors that are open to the bright light. You angle it a little bit so you have a little more depth where you're seeing the pews and the background is actually the wall. Um, mm -hmm. It's the only way to do it without adding lights to it, or you oh. just get your JJ Abrams on and let all that light spill in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, the one message that I really, really want to get across is I think the one reason why people think that or are so intimidated by using off camera flash is all we see online is all these phenomenal photos. And there are some phenomenal photos where um, you know, there's really, um, uh, intricate light setups, you know, with freaking multiple lights and stuff like that. And that's, you know, you see a lot of that on, uh, on, you know, Magmod and it's great. It's inspirational, but you know, don't let that deter you. You can get away with some decent photos, you know, with just one flash, you know, and that's how it all starts. Just start with one flash. Once you get comfortable with that, you know, start building onto it. Um, you know, this shot was done with one flash. And as you can imagine, it was pretty dark because it was uh, underneath an overpass. This is at FDR. Um, so again, same thing. I bumped up my ISOs to make sure that I was able to get these beams, um, you know, exposed. And um, my flash was really low on this. It was probably below 132, you know, and I just had it like right behind me. As you can see, I'm with a 16 pointed up. And so it was pretty much over my shoulder shooting down this way. So... You know, like Leanne said before, just get with somebody, start practicing, and just build off there. I mean, you know, that's that's pretty much how I started. And I'm, you know, I mean, there are, Gruber is phenomenal. Scott, you know, he's phenomenal. Uh, Tommy, they're, not you, Tommy, but the other Tommy. Not um, me, Tommy. <laughs> Definitely not me. Hell you know, no. They're, they're all very, very well-versed in Flash. And, yep. um, you know, I, I just want everyone to know that it's, it's not hard. You just got to do it. You know? Absolutely. It, it is at first difficult to mm -hmm. make it look natural because you want, you feel like you have to blast them with light, but it's, it's definitely a less is more thing. It feels, it, it seems is. like. Especially at night. That's awesome. Oh, I love the atmosphere. That is so cool. <laughs> so, yeah. dope. so this is um a little bit of a more, I don't want to say advanced shot, but you know, it, it took a lot of thinking and what and planning to do. So I knew I wanted this shot and I went out and set my settings up first. So um, behind them, I have um, a flash. I don't think it was gridded, but I definitely had a blue gel on it. All right. And I had my mag box over to my left, again, 45 degrees shooting down. As you can see, here's a shadow from her head. So you can kind of guess of the, the angle that that was shooting mm -hmm. at. 
And um, so behind, I had uh, Jenna hide behind. And as you can see, there's a little bit of hair right here. I totally missed Photoshopping that out, but nobody ever notices. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Ted looking in. So um, I just had her continue spread, her spread. I just thought he was like a minotaur right? or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Had a really long uh, uh, rat tail going on. But, um and I just fired off a couple shots, you know, and was able to get uh, the look that I wanted. So, um, for this, so for this one, because the light was really close to them, I didn't really have to have it all that high because it was closer to them. Um, and it was, you know, I knew that it would, if I had it too high, I would lose a lot of this blue. And I kind of lost a little bit of it, but you know, it, you can still tell it's, it's not white. But if I had it higher, it would totally have um, lost some of the details in here and uh, totally blown out the smoke. So, um, you know, but watch that nuclear flash. And the one over here, you know, I probably had about maybe a little bit higher than 116, um, maybe right about that to, uh, to get them lit properly. I feel like that's something you see a lot when pe with people first starting out with um, off-camera flashes that the flash like right behind the couple's heads because they feel like they need that light spill. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? It's a yeah. it's a look, but it's something that I've definitely done when I was first trying out off camera flash. Mm -hmm. um, and it can that, <laughs> yeah. that right there can be super discouraging. <laughs> I remember <laughs> the first time I looked into this stuff, I and um, somebody told me about the, the strobus. I think it was Mike told me about the strobus, and I started looking at this guy's stuff, and I'm like. His one thing was like, oh, I, this is like uh, my space shuttle shot, and I used 25 flashes in this, and I was like, I'm out. <laughs> Man, I was like immediately <laughs> overwhelmed. I was like, holy shit, it was so much. But, yeah. you know, going going down to one light, I mean, can make a huge difference. Yeah, and this is one light here as well. You guys yeah, know where this is? That. You know where it is? No, no. where is that? Mm -hmm. I don't want to say it. I might be wrong. Is it Normandy Farms? No, it's not Normandy Farms. No. Uh, back yeah. in the art museum. Lancaster. <laughs> is it Lancaster? Lancaster? Lancaster. Lancaster. All right. So um, hard shot, backlit, full sun right here. Right. So if I had, you know, if I didn't have a flash, I mean, totally get blown out or, or whatever. Um, but I knew when I'm walking up here, you know, I saw that there was some color here. Uh, these beans definitely had some color. So I knew that would add an element. Um, and I wanted to get this starburst, you know, so I think, uh, let me see what this is. I'm going F7, F F7. Nah, it's definitely more than F7. I'm going to say like 18. 22. <laughs> Holy shit. I was wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> I went full mode on that one. So, um, and you know, and I probably tried a couple different um, F stops before I was like, you know what, F22 it is. Uh, because it was still pretty bright, um, which means that you know this power, this flash power right here, had to be pretty, uh, pretty powerful. And I don't, I think I'm trying to look at the shadows on this. It looks like I think I might have had it like right over here, or maybe in uh, right I over here. It. Actually, there it is, right there. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is. It's um, you know, no, there's no uh, mag box because it was. Uh, I think it was pretty windy that day. And it's just coming like right down, you know, right down that way. So, you know, I might have, did I have a grid on this? Looks like there's a grid. Yeah, definitely had a grid because I did not want any of this to be lit. So, um, awesome. Yeah. And that's just one flash as well. Hey, and, and uh, just to put this out there, anybody who's watching that wants to throw out questions, write them right in that Facebook uh, mm -hmm. chat, right on the video, and we'll, we'll ask them for you. You know, don't, don't yep. be shy. Keep in mind, we're, we're about one to two minutes ahead of you guys, so we're going to try to right. get them all, but we're also trying not to cut James off. One, one yeah. question that came up was, um, do you ever use an ND filter? I don't. The only yeah. time that I – the last time I used an ND filter – Honestly, and I post this on Facebook today was when I took this shot. <laughs> Dope. But totally unrelated to off-camera flash. So. Right. That's badass. That was. A cool but the shot. reason why the re <laughs> thank you yeah, that was a three-minute shutter um, exposure because Sick. I wanted to get the the clouds moving. But um, that's the only time I've used an ND filter. Um, all right, last one I want to talk about. Let me see, and then we'll open it up to your questions. 
The answer is Marshall, Marshall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yep. This is it. All right. So this was probably the most intricate shot that I've taken to date. And um, it started to snow. The snow was totally unexpected. And the because it was uh, started to snow, the uh, bus, the, first of all, the venue was probably like an hour away from the ceremony. So that caused the commute to double that. So by the time we got to the ceremony, it was dark, it was snowing, you know, and um, I was like, you know what, you guys want to do photos outside? They were like, yeah. I was like, fantastic. Let's do it. So uh, one, two, three, four, four flashes, I think, for this one. So I had one behind these bushes right here, gelled blue, right? right? Actually, right behind this bush. It was gelled blue because I wanted to just get a different color on this. I had one behind them right here pointed at them, which gave them this nice, you know, um, separation from the back, you know, and lit up her veil really, really nicely. I had um, a flash to my left and a flash to my right. And uh, they were both gridded. I think this is pre-Magbox because this was a couple years ago. So they were all, the, the two that were on either side of me were gridded. This one behind them um, is what's lighting up all these snowflakes, right? So it was probably maybe 10 feet behind them, uh, which is why I was able to get, you know, uh, quite a bit of snowflakes in there. And again, just like uh, before, <clears throat> I had the, uh, the little thing flip down. So it really spread, Alyssa, it really spread the light. Right, that one was for Alyssa because she loves when I say spread right? because she's you know Yikes. Old. <laughs> and <laughs> um, the <laughs> I, I lost my train of thought. Um, but yeah, so that was about ten feet behind him because I knew that I it would really uh, get all these things uh, uh, illuminated, and it came out pretty badass. I think, and I was pretty happy with with the result. So. Hey, James, there's a question. When you're lighting them from behind, where do you aim the light in particularly? Like, where do you aim it at the couple? Um, usually I try to do it closer because I want, I want, especially at night on the hair, which I didn't really succeed all that much because it was kind of low. But um, this flash was actually like sitting on top of this right here. It was like literally sitting on top of this shrub, right? I put my flashes any, anywhere, anywhere they'll stand. I've, I've put them on branches before. Um, I put them on lampshades, you know? So um, I had it right here and I, and I usually try to make sure that it illuminates their, at least their heads so I can get some um, uh, isolation against the background. You know, I, I didn't really accomplish it right here, but the snowflakes helped. Um, but you know, her veil lit up nicely. So I usually try to aim like right here you know, that way um, it covers a little bit of both. But this is one um, where I previously said that this would be a perfect idea where, or situation where you have two flashes, uh, two flashes gridded, one on him, one on her. Uh, that way, you know, you can really make sure that you get that nice um, halo around them. I just and didn't have the opportunity. To that's do from, the, from the front, right? Or two no. flashes from behind? Two flashes behind. Oh no, shit! Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I got. It. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Away. That makes sense because they're not they're not singular objects. They have a lot of like roundness to them. People. Exactly. And so yeah. you can't always see the exact edge because there's something else behind them blocking them, like their shoulder or something. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then how did you uh, from the front? It's just one light. Yeah, there's two. There's two. Okay. One on, yeah, one on the side, one on the side. Okay, that's right. Yes, sir. And they might have, I'm pretty sure they had both have spears on them. Back when I had two spears, I lost one and never bought the other one. So, so this is like a, what, like a three to five light setup? If you uh, did the blue. One, two, three, four, four lights. Hmm. I like it. Yeah, the blue is cool. Yeah, yeah I felt it. I think the blue is needed because the only other color in the photo would be their skin without that. So that's great. Yeah, right here is a little bit of something, but. I like it. Yeah. Now you, now you have our approval. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Since you needed to hear that, I like it. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. <laughs>
I guess That's you're really good. fantastic. I guess you're good I like now. <laughs> but, uh, can you talk for a minute? Uh, I want to go to the opposite of this. This is like at uh, night and all lit up wonderfully. Can you talk about um, making it look like golden hour when it's not with flash? Ooh. You know, honestly, I don't ever do that. All right, cool. Oh. Let's start talking yeah. about that. better. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shenanigans. I, I, I think I tried it a couple times. It really didn't come out the way I wanted to. I, I talked to Matt Gruber because he's like phenomenal at anything the guy does. Um, I talked to him a little bit about how um, he accomplished it, and I tried it. You know, it, it didn't work. It really, honestly, didn't have the look that I really wanted. So I just never tried it again. Yeah, I have failed at it every time I tried it. That's why yeah. I was hoping you had some. I, uh, I've, I've had some success with it, and the trick is to like use. Uh, if you guys don't want me sharing. Yeah, not um, at all. Talk away. Well, you're already you know, you, sharing. Yeah, it's already happening, man. You never I feel talk weird talking these. about it. This is James's show. I don't know. I feel weird. So um, so the, the most of the time I've tried it, it really sucked and it was terrible. But when I figured it out, I was watching some video online about it. And the trick was to have the light really, really, really far away. Yeah. And you, you have to use like an 8600, which I have one, like the big, huge, like studio lights. And... You have to kind of jerry rig a gel on there if you don't have like they have weird ones they sell which is like a cone that you like tape on there it's it's awful but you have to kind of put a gel in there to make the orange color or the cto color um, but it has to be really really far away so that way it can kind of hit everything on its way back to where you are because um, in the beginning i was trying it was like 10 feet away 15 feet away 20 feet away and it was like only only that orange color right in the middle of where the light was and nothing on the side. So it just didn't look realistic. Yeah. So the farther away, the better, because then it can hit a couple of trees on its way back, a couple of bushes on its way back. Um, yeah. And then it kind of really looks like if the sun is just spilling over the scene. Uh, and that was kind of the trick. Huh. All right, good to know. Q and A time. Q &A. All right, people, throw, throw some Q &A. questions Q &A. out Q &A. there. All right, we got to give them a minute to catch up with us, and then we'll yeah, right? start rapid fire. I'm, I'm ready. Let, should we uh, <laughs> go ready. out of speaker view or whatever? What do we do? Back to grid view? Yeah, there we go. There it is. Why do you have a mask on? I got to go grocery Why? shopping tomorrow. We're, we're not six feet away. We're 60 <laughs> miles away. Definitely Me and Tommy true. are like 30 miles away. Uh, it's uh, too close for my comfort. <laughs> Just to throw this out there, you know, this is the James Webb show. Um, if anyone is like super nervous, how I first learned how to use lights for off camera flash was a video called Zach Arias One Light. And it's super old. All the equipment's probably completely outdated, but it was awesome because he, like, step by step, you could watch him and he went in all these terrible situations and made them look cool using only one light. Uh, so if you're still looking for something because you feel like super beginner, for me, that was like a game changer like 10 years ago. It, I there's love probably way better Zach stuff Arias. Out there. Yeah. He's a cool dude. One right. light. We got a question. How do you avoid harsh shadows on faces when lighting people? The um, closer the light to the um, subject, the softer it'll be. Um, again, with the, uh, think about the, um, think about, and, and Ted's really thinking, Yeah, he's right? Thinking I'm trying hard. to, I'm, I'm so, trying to imagine why that's right. And I think it's because you're talking about with a soft box, right? Um, any light source. Any light. This, okay. Yeah. Uh, think about okay, the sun, okay, okay. right? The sun is oh, really sir. far away Bigger. and it causes harsh shadows, right? Um, and, and try this with, uh, with um, you know any light, so try it with a with a, your ceiling light. You know as it, as you get closer to it, you'll see the the uh, shadows soften up. But that's why I always try to have um, if I'm using a mag box or even if I have it on a sphere, um, I try to have my uh, flash right out of out of uh, frame. You know to uh, uh, to get as close to the subject as possible. Right on. The next one is any clarification on second shutter flash flash use. I don't like rear sync, maybe. That, that um, I'm gonna let you run with that. Whatever you interpret it as, James. So I I usually use it during um, receptions. You What's the question? Rear... All right. So is any clarification on second shutter flash use? I think we're assuming that is rear curtain sync. Is that what we're saying, or something like that? I think so. 
that's for like shutter dragging and stuff right and getting all the cool yeah bin shots yeah and... absolutely um and matt's really good at that again <laughs> for actually you know what he doesn't use rear sync on that he uses um he uses uh I just realized the last one I did that shit at, I didn't a long switch to rear. <laughs> Hold on, I'll show you. I have an example of where I did rear sync. Tommy and I did uh, it at that barn wedding. That um, one was awesome, yeah. I actually forget how we did it. It was like high F-stop, like the flash was powerful, and it had to be pointed right at them with a low shutter speed, right? Yeah, low shutter like speed, F10, and then rear curtain sync. Was what Alyssa, we, we can't answer your question. <laughs> they come from the Stork factory, you know. No, I think Bill John said it right. What, wait, what? Did I miss one? Yeah, he said, uh, he said, he answered Alyssa. He said they come from Godox. I don't think that was it. <laughs> yeah, if you look. So she asked, where do babies come from? And Bill John said, Godox. And I agree. Fair enough. That's a whole different lesson where babies come from. <laughs> right. All right. I got one. Share it. Here it comes. <laughs> That's where babies come from. Uh, I don't feel good about that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, mm. Share screen. All right. So oh, here's here one. Oh, dude, that's amazing. Uh, Fuck. Oh. That's so, real. Like, there's no Photoshop that's legit. I love yeah, that. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's all legit. So this was, I think, um, it might have been 11 second shot. I hate so you what I did, bitch. <laughs> there was some Photoshop right here because I had my, my flash was right here. Right. And, um, I had it right on them. So I let it run. And then, um, at the very end is when my, uh, flash popped and, um, and Eric Calarico and I had a lot of debate on if I could have just taken a shot where the fire, where the flash fired first. And then it dragged on, but I felt that I might have gotten some some movement. And you see, there's a little bit of movement right here, but it's not all that much. Um, but there might have been some ghosting if I if I uh, fire it off first. So I let this run for I'm just gonna say nine seconds until I um, hit the info, and then at the very end my um, my flash fired. But this is but using a rear sync shutter is really really helpful when you're trying to. Um, if you're in a really dark situation and you know you want to get a lot of details out of your surroundings or if you're trying to get some some light uh, trails and then at the very end you know you your um, flash fires and it freezes the uh, the subject where it's at that's that is dope. so cool so sick that's a beautiful shot can you talk a little bit more about why you would use the flash at the end I always use the flash in the beginning it's just like never done it another way Can yeah more about and that. I honestly, I honestly think, I mean, I've never um, experimented with doing both, you know, to see which uh, result is better. But um, it, it's all about freezing your subject, you know, um, because if if I had, I mean, again, this is a nine second shot. So if I had sh uh, fired this in the very beginning, you know, um, and they started, you know, moving around, I might have gotten some ghosting on them. Whereas, you know, it, it fired at the very, very end of the exposure. And, and that's the last thing that the, uh, that was on the, uh, in the frame, you know, or that's the last thing that was lit. Yeah. So any, any movement that they may have had goes away um, from the, the flash firing at the very end. I will honor James Webb next time and try that and see how it works out. <laughs> yeah, I have to experiment with that with myself because I always do it in the beginning as well. Um, and for I'm anyone that really... doesn't know how to do that, that's through rear curtain sync. That's what enables it that is. feature. Yeah, and the thing with um, with Canon is that it actually doesn't have the um, capability to do it with Canon gear if you're off camera. You actually, I actually have a um, a young now mm. <laughs> trigger. What did you just say? Young Thank now. You. Where the fuck is my, oh, you know, here it is. <laughs> All right. So um, it's the same thing as my, as the Canon, right? Oh, Except wow. 
it has rear curtain um, uh, options on it. And it works with uh, Canon flashes. Why Canon doesn't have it, I don't know, but this one does, so. And um, it's, uh, it's really easy to, to, um, to use. You'll see the, sh the triangles. Let me see, like, see those triangles right there? Right above where it says, see, see those arrows right there? Yeah. Right? So that is the uh, rear sync um, icon. So if you have that, it's going to fire at the very end. Nice. Amazing. That's awesome. That's, that's really cool. We're going to have to experiment with all that stuff. Yeah. Pat and I were supposed to have a flash date, but then COVID happened. So maybe yeah. we'll schedule that. We'll try. <clears throat> Awesome. Hey, so any uh, like other tricky lighting scenarios that that like this comes in handy and like that you I want, I'm looking for ones that you would see like a lot. So like the ceremony with the backlit, you know, entrance space is one that you would see a lot. Things like that. Um, yeah, oh, back. Yeah, I was just gonna say backlit is is definitely um, a challenge, but you, you know, I can I can walk into a place and kind of feel pretty comfortable. I'm pretty confident that I'm going to be able to to light it appropriately. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I know it may not be off camera that we're talking about on this specific instance, but like, let's say bride preps in a basement, right? That, yeah. That's that's where it's at. Um, you know, what are some things that you take in and make it look? So we talked about trying to make it look like natural light, right? Bounce um, it off the wall. Off the wall. So now bounce it off the wall. Okay. Bounce it off the wall because. If um if I'm and um Jenna and I actually did this at it wasn't in the basement but it was in it was uh it was on a street and she had this couple and was, I think this photo is actually on her website it's this wall and it's black and it's white and she has a couple on each on either side of them but we weren't able to get this the lighting right it was at night you know mm -hmm. we tried off camera flash it was too harsh. So um, I just turned around and there was this huge brick white wall behind us. So I said, let's point the flashes towards this, right? We'll crank up the flash as high as possible. And it eliminated, eliminated the entire thing, like beautiful. It was like perfect. That's awesome. So, it but cool. if you're in a basement, uh, bounce it off the wall and you know, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll look, it'll act, the wall will act like a huge softbox and look really nice. Nice. Hey, the, the peeps are asking, what's the shittiest lighting situation you have ever been in? <laughs> a basement? What um, do you say, a really? basement? <laughs> now, you know what? And I, I hate to ever talk. Well, I won't mention. Yeah, don't the, mention the names of venues or whatever. Just But there is a venue um, where they have lighting built into the walls and into the ceilings, right? And at any given point during the, the reception, it'll um, instantaneously go all blue, right? And then it'll turn to all green, right? And then it'll turn to all red. And it's the freaking worst. Is it and weird that like, I know what venue you're talking about? I know exactly yeah, I know what, what you're talking about. Too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I know what that so, is, too. I, I freaking hate it. Yep. Yeah. So how do you deal with that? Uh, you just spray and pray. <laughs> Uh, I you resort to just That's pointing happy. this like straight at them, you know, just to and bring the the power down a little bit. So, right. So what really a, think on the would mag spheres or anything like that help in that situation, like a, a, a more spread out fill or any of that kind of stuff? Um, it can, but it's 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 honestly so overpowering, and it happens like that. You know what I mean? So. Can I ask you a question. Are you talking about uplighting on the walls? Did, you can ask another one. <laughs> Are you talking about uplighting on the walls or spotlights on the couple? <clears throat> no, it's um, the wall is in, the lighting is embedded in the walls and in the ceiling. Okay, I know what you're talking about, and I've I've been there before. The the way that I've overcome that, and most people do not shoot this way, so you know that I'll say that beforehand. But I stop my shutter down a lot, and I just darken that crap down so much that I can spotlight the couple, I just make my off-camera lights that much brighter to compensate. Um, yeah. They might be at a fourth power, but I don't care. You know, it works well for me. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's that's kind of what I've done to overcome that because I, I would I would never kind of shoot the flash at someone's face. Um, yeah. I don't but, care, I'll do it. 
<laughs> did you did you just confront the guest? No, oh no, my no. God, Ted. I just say like my style, Ted, you know. Ted, Ted, is, Ted, he just totally pulled an Oscar Hernandez. Like, <laughs> actually, James, here's how you do it. Yeah, right? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't mean it that way. I don't mean it that way. I'm just trying to think like a problem solving aspect, like how to solve a problem. James, I know this is your crash course, but I'm going to tell you how to do it right. You got that? <laughs> I've, had, right. I've, had, hey, I've had too much Zevia tonight. Let's get let's get past that as quickly as possible. All right, hey, hey. So we have a. Oh, you're going to ask no, a question. Go. Do it. Is it David Alonzo's question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do it. You do it. No, you do it. You do it. All right, it's All right. my story. I'll do it. You do it. All right, fine. All right, he's asking. Say it's spotty light outside on the couple. Do you use the mm -hmm. flash to even out the light on the couple, or how would you approach it? Yeah, I definitely got to um, use a light to even out. My first thing if uh, would be to, to have them turn their back against the, well, first of all, I wouldn't put them in the spotty light, right? Okay. Um, if I had no choice, I would turn their back um, to the light source. That way it's, you know, it's shadowed and I would just shoot it as is, or I would, you know, have some type of a, of a light on them. Do you ever play with that? Like where you put them in the weird light? Um, I know some oh, people yeah. like Jen Ludwig does that a lot and it's really cool and that's yeah. nice fun uh let's see I know for video we use that almost like it's like a spotlight like it's cool to throw them in it sometimes mm -hmm. can't say it's my idea i totally stole it from jen and colin now, hey. you know um charmy talks about the weird light at one uh, i think last year at wppi and it really um uh inspired me to look for weird light and i kind of got away from it um i was all about it at one point um I'm trying to find this one example where I really uh, was able to use it, and it was really cool. But I kind of forget their names. I forget mm -hmm. na people's names all the time. That's okay. Ted's about to jump in to tell you he never forgets people's names. <laughs> yeah. That is false. Savage. <laughs> I'm just no, kidding. I I, you know that. I forget people's names all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I forget people's faces. I forgot your sister or sister's in law or whatever. One of his brides. <laughs> Funny story at a wedding, um, Ted likes to call people by their names. So I convinced him that the bride's oh. brother's name was like, I don't even remember what it was. It was something ridiculous, like Quincy. I was like, his name's Quincy. I was like, oh, why do you call him that? And I got him calling him Quincy the whole fucking day. It was amazing. Well, then after a while, it just became a joke and we just yeah. did it on purpose and everybody like, laughed. That's that's not my name. Like, it's too late, bro. This is what your name is now. <laughs> this is cool. This is what I meant. I love this. That's dope. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I saw this really weird light and thought it was pretty cool. So I put him in it. Otherwise, you know, I mean, it wasn't as spot. It wasn't really spotty at all. I kind of put them in um, one of the spots where there was a, uh, you know, really wasn't spotty at all. And there's no off camera flash on this at all. So let's get probably, it out of here. No, it was great. <laughs> Get that shit out of here. Get that shit out of here. I don't see that. It's not off camera flash. Get it. <laughs> that's fun. Hey, so it. do you ever use um, larger modifiers? Because that's something you talked about a couple times, which was like um, having it, you know, they always say like uh, for soft light, it's, you know, closer and bigger, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the closer it is, the bigger it is, the softer it is. Um, so <laughs> talk about modifiers. Yikes. Uh, um, um, uh, there's so many things to say there. <laughs> anyway, if, uh, if, if you're, uh, can you talk about modifiers just for a few, a few seconds? Yeah. Um, that so a few seconds, that's enough. Yeah. All right. We're good. <laughs> yes. I have them. Yep. Good night. I do. I have a big, I have a, I don't even know how to, there's no way to say this oh, without. I need <laughs> so a brag, I have, James. I got a pretty big soft box. <laughs> <laughs> Carol Baskin can vouch. Be oh, <laughs> cool, cats and kittens. Yikes. Oh, well, we went there. Um, I think it's right in sardine oil. Probably like a, a 40, uh, a 40 <laughs> inch, but I don't use it anymore since I got the, uh, the uh, mag box. How big's the mag um, box? I don't, I don't have one. I think it's like 27, 30. Okay. Something like that. Okay. But enough, I, right? uh, the only time I used it was during um, uh, formals at, at weddings. You know, um, I'd have softbox on this side and a spear on this side. My softbox, I would have um, brighter, and I use the uh, the sphere as as a fill in, you know. So, um, but since I got the mag box, I don't use it. That's a good topic for family formals when you're when you're doing off camera flash. Are you doing 
Uh, same thing, 45, 45? Yeah. Okay. And then, and then a fill. Yeah, but the one thing you got to watch out for is how you're positioning everybody because um, if it's too far over or if they're too much of an angle, you got to watch for shadows, you know, that um, – that they the person standing next to uh, them might cast on them so that's just one thing that you gotta watch out for makes sense yep i heard if Anything there's shadows, shadows in your photos it's typically carol baskin's fault <laughs> yeah that's that's common knowledge now all right um what do you guys what you got any more things you want to talk about should we field some more questions or you guys feel good about this i feel like we covered a ton yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right. Get, uh, get Thirty-five seconds more of waiting for questions. Uh, get them in now if you want to get them in. And then, yeah, that's fine. While we go into that, James, you still are planning on doing a lighting workshop, right? Do you want to give anyone any info on that? So I, we haven't talked about a uh, make update for the um, lighting workshop in Speakeasy, but I definitely still want to do that because there's no way to learn than hands-on. Yeah. So you know that's uh, that's a good opportunity. And it's um, way more my, than this, right? We talked about that before. Oh, yeah, there's a yeah. lot going into that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, this is where you can actually go in, set your settings, you know, um, and practice. You know, we're talking about practice. Yeah. We're talking about practice? We're talking about practice. Practice. <laughs> anyway. All right. I think we're good. All right. I'm not seeing any more questions. That was awesome. Thank Let's you. Let's do it. Yeah, it was super fun. Thanks, guys. Yeah, seriously, thanks for coming on, man. This was great. Yeah, it, my uh, pleasure. Probably tomorrow or whatever, guys, we'll have this edited and it'll go back up and you can watch this as many times as you want and get to spend as much time with the great web as you want. Not as much as you want. Like, he has a home life. He needs and it. also yeah. six feet back. Right. Six feet away. <laughs> All right, cool. Awesome. Oh. All right, guys. Thanks, man. It's awesome. Always, always fun hanging with you, Julians. Yeah, James. Right. Thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate your time. It's uh, it's, it's fun to see pleasure, how your creative mind works and and how you're able to get the amazing shots you get. I, I think it's really incredible. So thank you so much for showing us all that stuff. Uh, my pleasure, guys. Hopefully, it was able to help uh, the viewers out. All right. Hey, and if people want to see more of your work, you got like an Instagram or something like that they can check out. The James Webb. No, actually, that's my personal one. It's James Webb Photography. James. Webb It'd be Photography. funny if he said no. I don't use the internet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so he's off the gritter, man. He's a prepper. I like it. He, he doesn't use the internet while he's right. on the internet telling them. He doesn't use the internet. That's like those SEO people I posted. About I don't today. believe in that stuff. And hey, we're getting a lot of a lot of very thankful people. A lot of people are saying thanks. So thanks a lot, James. It meant a lot to you. Uh, y'all, y'all are welcome. Love you awesome. all. Tell me about the